welcome you to the First Congregational Church. It is wonderful to see all of you here, to see rabbits up in the balcony, and uh, wow, this is just great. You are going to be inspired here this morning. The music that we have for you on this Easter Sunday is going to be absolutely moving. It will leave you in a place of celebration when you leave this place here this morning. So happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Uh, just a couple of very quick announcements. First of all, I welcome you, especially if you're a visitor. And uh, every week what we do here is a tradition is we ask you to sign these friendship pads. They're really nice looking blue vinyl pads and you'll find all the center aisle areas of the pews. And we ask you to sign your name, pass it down to the end of the pew, back to the center. If you want to give us any additional information in your name, or even if you don't want to give us your name, please uh, at least pass it down to the end of the pew back. And especially on a Sunday like this, when there are so many different people seated around you, this gives us a wonderful opportunity uh, to get to know each other better by name. So if you will do that, while well, I offer just a couple of very brief announcements. First of all, uh, following our worship service here today, there is a Easter pancake breakfast upstairs. Get there by going out this door and heading to the left and upstairs. There's also an elevator service for the upstairs where we have an Easter pancake breakfast for you. And one of the specialties of that, like in a little secret, is the chocolate chips in the pancakes. So you will definitely like that. Uh, but that follows the service here. If you'd like to join us for the uh, Easter Pancake Breakfast, uh, please head upstairs following the service and join us. Uh, I also want to congratulate you. Uh, I tried to find a parking place around here at 8.30 this morning, and I had a difficult time finding one. And I see all of you here. This is like going to the University of Michigan football stadium, isn't it, on a Saturday afternoon? This, is, this was great, so I commend you for uh, finding a parking place and, uh, and coming here and joining us. We're going to have a wonderful time together. The two hymns that the congregation will be singing, Christ the Lord is risen today, and the Alleluia Chorus, the words of which are printed in your worship bulletin. So you won't have to fumble for a hymnal or try to figure out where those words are located. They're located in your bulletin. And uh, we very much look forward to the kind of robust singing that we'll have together. Finally, uh, Sarah Eggleston, who's standing over here at the door, she's a member of our Board of Deacons. She'll be hanging around in the narthex following the service to welcome you, but also to give you any additional information that you might need about our church to find your way around. Or if you'd like any additional information, she'd be happy to do that as well. So, welcome to worship this day. Let us worship God together. Mm -hmm.
morning on this beautiful Easter morning. Please note the sunrise coming, the sun rays coming through the windows. Please well, uh, join me this morning in the call to worship, the prayer of invocation, and the Lord's Prayer. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. The resurrection message affirms the Spirit's power to renew and restore life. Those who trust in God's power will not be defeated. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is good news. The light of Christ shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never root it out. Let us join together in one voice in prayer. Let us pray. All glory and honor, praise and adoration be given to you, Almighty God. You have overcome the hold of darkness and death, inviting all to enter into the wonder and mystery Christ's resurrection. Come to us, we pray, in your risen power, and make us glad with your presence, that we may experience for ourselves and spread abroad to others the good news of your living love through Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Stand up on the pews. Stand up on the pews. We can see it. 
And so with resurrection humming in our hearts, tune our minds to your song of peace. We joyfully present these gifts to you, a tangible chorus of thanksgiving, a harmony of hope for your kingdom to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
really something. Thank you, Shohei. Thank you, wonderful orchestra. Thank you, wonderful choir. Uh, what a great presentation. Doesn't get any better than this. Well, today is Easter Day, right? Yes. And we can feel it, we can see it, uh, we're part of it. You remember, perhaps, the last year Easter Day was on April 1st. You remember that? It was April Fool's Day. I don't know if you know or not, but the earliest that Easter Day can be is March 22nd, and the latest that Easter Day can be is April 25th. So we're really toward the latest part of the celebration of Easter this year. Many people ask uh, me and others, uh, you know, how do they figure out each year when Easter Day is going to happen? And the date for Easter, you may or may not know, is calculated in a way that's very similar to the way they calculate the Jewish Passover. It is set on the first Sunday after the first full moon, after the spring equinox. So that's how they come up with a date for Easter Day. Uh, next year, Easter Day is going to be on Sunday, April 12th, and I'd like to invite you to put that on your calendar uh, right now as you head home following the service. We'll look forward to seeing you again next year. Or before. Well, let us pray together, shall we, as we begin. Let us pray. O oh God, as the three women came to the tomb so long ago in the early morning, so we have come to this place of worship this Easter morning to hear once again words of hope and life and love. Lift us with your truth, and may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts together be acceptable and pleasing to you through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Listen now to these very holy and sacred words. They come to us from the Gospel of Mark, the 16th chapter, the first of the Easter stories that we're told. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They'd been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us? from the entrance to the tomb. When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been already rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and flooded from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were so afraid. We all know this story so well, don't we? After the violence and after the anguish and the chaos and the trauma of Good Friday and the silence of death on Saturday, it is now early on that first Easter morning in Jerusalem. There is still a chill in the early morning air, feeling nervous and frustrated and emotionally exhausted and wanting to make sure that their friend Jesus receives a proper burial. These three women, Mary the mother of James, Mary Magdalene, and Salome, they head out to the cemetery to perform one final act of devotion and love. They go to Jesus' tomb to anoint Jesus and to anoint his decaying body with sweet-smelling spices. which of course is such a beautiful and very tender act of love and care. As they are traveling there, they begin to wonder aloud how they're going to move that very large and that very heavy stone away from the entrance to Jesus' tomb. However, when they arrive into their utter shock and to their bewilderment, they see that the stone in front of Jesus' tomb had already been moved back. And then as they enter the tomb, they see a young man dressed they said in a white robe, sitting on the right side of the tomb. 
So what do you think? Is it an angel? Is it a ghost? The three women are justifiably shaken. They're anxious. They're bewildered. When unexpectedly this young man says to them, do not be alarmed. Don't be afraid. Don't be shocked. Don't be surprised. Do not be alarmed. I know you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, the one who was crucified. Listen, he has been raised. He is no longer here. So go and tell his disciples and Peter, yes, that one who had just earlier denied Jesus, Tell them that he is going ahead of you to Galilee, to that very place where his earthly ministry began. And there you will see him, exactly as he told you. O-M-G. <laughs> really? Who are you kidding? This doesn't happen. Life isn't this way. So with such great good news, do these women begin to celebrate? Do they quickly take a picture of this empty tomb and the inside of the empty tomb and post it on their Facebook page so everybody can see it and hear about this? Do they run into Jerusalem shouting, hey everybody, guess what? Christ is risen, he's risen indeed. No, according to the Gospel of Mark, the three women went out and fled the tomb. For terror and awe had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone. To anyone? Why? Why? Well, I would imagine it was because. Very honestly, they were speechless. They were overwhelmed. They were incredulous. They were stunned. They didn't yet have the vocabulary at hand to even begin to describe what they were seeing and what it was they were feeling. And candidly, wouldn't you have been in a similar emotional place as well if you had been there that day I know I would have been you see the three women didn't go to the tomb that morning expecting a resurrection in spite of what they may have heard from Jesus they never anticipated this possibility that Jesus would somehow come alive again after his death no, confronted by the reality of that brutal Roman cross on Friday, the women are left without words to speak as they experience now this empty tomb. They certainly don't have a clue how they should even respond. Words and actions totally fail them. They, like everybody else, presumed that Jesus was dead. Why wouldn't he be? They saw what happened on Friday. Now, perhaps they may have been able to manage the thought of, Jesus' body being stolen, which was a theory back then, or maybe even missing, but the idea that Jesus was alive again? Well, that was just too much for them to handle. Depressed, they were in shock. Here they were feeling very deep sorrow. They just couldn't grasp the idea that God had the final say. You see, the story of Easter is a story that requires us to take a giant leap of faith. The Easter story is a story about something that totally defies rational explanation. Easter is about a truth that completely transcends our logic. What was supposed to have been a sad visit to tend to a friend's grave and a very compassionate and caring burial rite instead became for these three women a moment of transcendence. In truth, what was planned to be a ritual and what was planned to be a closure instead became an entirely 
unpredicted reversal and a radical, new, and totally unexpected reality. Who could have imagined? You see, for these three women, and hopefully for us as well, Easter is about claiming for ourselves this mysterious and very earth-shattering good news that even when we face heartache and trial, even when we face trouble and disappointment, even when it looks like there is for us absolutely no hope, and even when it seems that darkness and despair have played the final card, Easter can happen. And God will still have the final say. For you see, Easter shifts us from despair to the possibility of new horizons and new hope. Easter shifts us from death to the possibility of a life beyond this living. Easter shifts us from fear to the possibility of courage and strength and power. Easter shifts us from failure to the possibility of forgiveness and the possibility of second chances. Easter shifts us from pessimism to the possibility of optimism and a chance for new beginnings. Easter shifts us from loneliness and depression to the possibility of love and nurturing companions. Easter shifts us from grief and sorrow and suffering to the possibility, to the possibility of faith and hope and joy and peace and so much more. This is our Easter expectation. It is built upon the foundation of the one whom we believe is a living and loving presence in our world and in our lives today. It is built upon the one whom we believe can roll away stones from these tombs of darkness and hardship that sometime hold us. It is built upon the one whom we believe is always with us, as mysterious as that may be, and no matter what. And even when we mistakenly assume we are at we are at a dead end, and that there is no way out for us. Empty tombs still surprise us. Empty tombs still happen, even for us today. And even as the three women discovered, when least expected, divine surprises can still happen. I hope, at least in a little way, you can hold on to that and really believe it. So whether you take the Easter story literally or metaphorically or symbolically or parabolically, the message of Easter remains the same. Easter is not about physicality. Easter is about God's eternal yes to humankind and God's eternal yes to possibility and to faith and to hope. The Easter event changed Jesus' followers into women and men of strength and faith and purpose. That is the proof of the resurrection. Changed lives. I like what author Anne Lamott says in her book, Plan B, Further Thoughts on Faith. As you may, as you may remember, Anne is a rather irreverent uh, but a very devout convert uh, to Christianity who often writes very candidly about her experiences as a recovering alcoholic and as a single mother, and whose life was literally saved by her encounter with Jesus Christ through a small Presbyterian congregation in California. It is within this personal context that she wrote this and wrote when God is going to do something wonderful, God always starts with a hardship. When God is going to do something really amazing, God starts with an impossibility. 
Indeed, this is the wonder and the glory of Easter, believing and accepting the impossibility, the irrationality of Easter into our own lives. Perhaps the Easter story is inviting you today to get out of your seat. You might be feeling that a lot right now, as a matter of fact, but it may be encouraging you, inviting you today to get out of your seat, to get back into the game of life. Surrounded by the hope of something more. And then faithfully finish your story. It's a leap of faith. So my friends, on this very uplifting and exceptional Easter day, as we have been lifted and inspired by all this beautiful music we have just heard, And as we celebrate the very pinnacle of the Christian year and Christian message together, which is this event of the resurrection of Jesus, let us remember and celebrate that God always has the final word. And then let us break open the doors of our hearts and our souls and our minds and let us let the liberating breeze of this empty tomb and of the resurrection mystery Revive our spirits and then push away the dark clouds of disappointment and doubt. My friends, go and live today with abandon. Live with freedom. Do not be afraid. And do not be afraid of what tomorrow may bring. For we believe through the resurrection event that we are not alone. That light is greater than darkness and that we are never without hope. For we believe that Christ is risen from the grave. The tomb of despair and disappointment is empty. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Go in peace. Amen. Friends, today is a day of hope, a day that we declare that darkness and death do not win. And this very morning, we are being challenged to cling to this hope and to this truth in the midst of what was unspeakable devastation and violence and hatred in our world. This morning in Sri Lanka, there was a series of eight coordinated bombings that targeted churches and hotels and one home. Uh, Lives were lost, families are devastated, chaos and fear run deep. And on this Easter morning, I think now more than ever, we, we have to proclaim our faith. We have to hold fast to this Easter promise. For even in Jesus' time, in the midst of violence and corruption and hatred, Jesus rose. And his love and his light and his message could not be kept in a tomb. And friends, today, in 2019, it still cannot be kept silent. So I invite you to join me in a spirit of hope and resilience as we pray. Let us pray. God of hope and promise and expectation, you've pushed away our worst fears and hopelessness when you rolled away the stone. You have given the gift of new beginnings, of blank canvases to fill, of new chapters to write, and new challenges to overcome. And sometimes, God, it's so hard to get started. Sometimes it's just easier to keep ourselves busy or to focus on what's lacking or broken rather than what could be. And God, those are our own stones, stones of self-doubt or pessimism. Help us roll these stones away and truly live the new life Jesus invites us to. Burst into our lives like this spring after a very long winter. Thaw our hearts from apathy or busyness or despair. And help us to reach our roots deep within this world you created within the families and communities that you blessed us with. 
This Easter morning, God, we are invited to live out our greatest hope and expectations of who you created us to be. Lord of light, we pray this morning that you descend upon the people and the places in Sri Lanka that are living through the unspeakable. May you hold them, may you heal them, may you renew the charge in each one of us to create change for peace and acceptance and love in this world. May hate and violence not hold the power. For your son overcame that and showed us that light will always shine brighter. So help us to be that beacon. Challenge us to reconsider what is possible. And send us forth from this place to be a new creation, blessing the world your son so loved. For it is in his name, the risen one, we pray. Amen. <coughs>
and dance the dance of life and love and freedom and hope and faith. For Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen.